this is the paper I am asking you to read in details. So application of GPR in groundwater exploration. Uh, this is the this is very famous paper. Okay, very most cited paper on the groundwater condition. So they did a survey on the coastal lagoon area using 200 megahertz antenna, uh, and they have found after doing the survey, they have found this is the dune. There be some surface correction. Uh, this is the dune. It look like a dune, like okay. And they did uh, 200 megahertz antenna. This is the time. Remember that nanosecond. NS means nanosecond. This is giving you the time. At this time, you are having the water table and it has a relationship like this. So you have seen three consecutive bands. And water table has a very distinct features. Once I told you that uh, this this type and this is how you can uh, detect a water table, it will be very easier for you. Uh, and see this qualitative interpretation and all the things as it's applicable for the geology part also. That is basically depends on the expertise and the experience on the on the interpreter. How good uh, uh, how good uh, your skills are. How how much experienced you are without experience you cannot understand now you can see this reflection stands out from the other reflection and it is identified as a water table and it has a three conjugative bands that is the positive generally i am saying this is the positive amplitude this is the negative amplitude and this is the positive amplitude this is how water table can be delineated if there is a high contrast here this is how the water table can be delineated from the same paper by doing so they have identified um the water table depths and the groundwater flow pattern so from there they have the, they did the groundwater flow pattern i'll suggest you to read this paper this might so if you are planning to apply gpr then this paper will be very much useful for you people this is the basic paper okay um so i did uh, another survey in i i don't remember where i did this one i think uh, like teaching chandra or some area and this is my water table now, uh, case study of Chandipur coastal area, I have discussed already in the resistivity uh, method where Chandipur is located. Here we have used only the 200 megahertz GSSI SIR 3000 system. Okay. And this is the specification I have taken. This paper has already been published. Oh, you know that I have already sent you that paper. So this is the VH data. And this is the radar phases. So, radar phases is the set of uh, or the assemblages of uh, data reflections. Set of radar reflections. See? The parallel lines, if you see parallel lines like this, then that will be your, I'm classifying as a parallel two features, but it will, it will give you, so parallel two features and So radar faces is the set or assemblages of the radar reflections. Suppose there is a parallel radar reflections are there, I'm, I'm marking it as a, I'm giving the name as a parallel phases, parallel to phases. So if there is a parallel reflection and the reflection configuration is medium to high amplitude, continuous and parallel to sub parallel to each other, then it could be washover seeds or yellow and Very high amplitude, then it will be the gravel deposit. Now, if you have a convex up radar phases, like this type of features, if you found, remember these uh, features and following on the based on these features i'll be classifying uh, i'll be interpreting the whole uh, criteria or the continuous strata are getting abruptly discontinued that will be the erosional surface and this is how water table in coastal can sediment let me show you so uh, in the convex arc condition the high amplitude reflection at the outer boundary and interdental dune and geometry so seeing the reflection configuration seeing the set of reflection configuration i am interpreting the gpr data and water table surface, the radar surface series of two or more bands of high amplitude reflection. And then the boundary between overlying unsaturated and underlying saturated sediment system. So um, that's the thing I have already discussed. This is the intertidal dune identification. So see, this structure is clearly identified and the internal geometry of the dune is, has already been established. Similarly, the freshwater groundwater contact, SGD. Do you know about the SGD? Submarine groundwater discharge. So gallons of fresh water get a um, area and it's in, within the two meter depth. And in the Gulf countries, uh, people generally uh, collect that area water and they use that water for the coastal uh, towns um, situated near to that uh, intertidal zone. So when the fresh water table or the water table is at higher position than the, um, uh, the groundwater level or the mean sea level, then this type of thing happened. Okay, so this water uh, table or uh, boundary can be marked easily. So see here, 
no reflections you have observed in this cross section this cross section i have taken from land side to the sea side okay so uh, if uh, as soon uh, so when we are taking these traverses uh, we have seen that there is no reflection coming from back from the sea layers or sea boundaries so this is a nil reflection because sea waters are conductive very much conductive is getting it absorbing the whole signal i generate okay so they are absorbing the whole signal they are eating the whole gpr signals okay nothing will be back from that and these are the multiples these the things uh, generally generates uh, if i conductive zone so as this part is the fresh water brackish water contact zone and high conductive zone and this is the uh, low conductive zone as a fresh water zone or the resistive zone so that boundary is identified again with two consecutive bands okay now channel and channel margins are identified as channel migration is also identified so this is how this was the previous channel then how the channel mar migration occurred channel fields are generally parallel here water table is has a cross cutting geometry with each other so this is the water table this situation a or this uh, line is your water table similarly um, here i have used uh, the vertical electrical sounding and the gpr data here the ground reflection you can see what the table reflection is identified clearly avalang river is there and this puribalam river side is the northeastern side and you can see the soil cover is changing from this side to this side at this depth if you take a slice here if you so consider is a 3d cake and you are taking a slice and uh, from this slide if you cut a slice then you will see this this layer has a low reflection or weak reflection due to the presence of saline water so here at this portion saline water intrusion has already begun or uh, happened so this is the depth slices i have taken the depth slices of 0.5 meter thickness so suppose you are cutting a slice from a 3d cake okay consider like this and that slice of uh, let's say few thickness will be there okay suppose you were giving um, cake but the cake to somebody and you were taking uh, the whole cut okay uh, cutting on, in this way okay at 0.31 meter this uh, slice is this i showing the gravel deposits basically the hydrogen and this blue weak zone is giving the idea of the saline deposit by doing so you, uh, we can establish a conceptual model like this so this was from that period